What's happening everybody, Jeremy Lord here and welcome to another illustration tutorial. In today's episode we're going to be going through one of my favorite tools in Clip Studio Paint. I'm going to be showing you guys how to use guides and rulers to create things like perfect ellipses and straight lines and parallel curves and so on. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we're going to take a look at a few things today in Clip Studio Paint. Um, using the guides and rulers tool. So guides and rulers are super handy for drawing this kind of mechanical drawing where we've got these kind of circles, tubes, um, we've even got concentric circles and especially these type of ellipses here where you know no matter what your skill level is ellipses can always be a little bit tricky uh, and so there's a range of different tools in Clip Studio Paint that can help you speed that up and get that a little bit more accurately so we're going to take a look at those today. So I've just popped this artwork now into Clip Studio Paint and you can see I've taken all the colors away so we're just going to focus on the line work today and take a look at how to create um, various elements in this. So we're not going to do the whole picture, um, we're just going to focus on a few kind of different elements that um, guides will really apply to here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab all of these guys and group them and then I can just drop the opacity of them a little bit more than what is currently there so I can see what I'm doing and I'm just going to hide the actual inking layer so we can kind of just go from this sketch that exists. Then um, I'm going to create two new vector layers. So Y2 you'll see in a little while. Um, it's going to be really handy working with one layer to work on your guides and the other to do your drawings. So we'll see what I mean in a minute. Um, and then vector layers because vector layers are just where it's at in Clip Studio Paint using regular bitmap layers you can do this it obviously will work but you're going to have you're going to you know cut yourself out of a lot of options um, that are going to be super handy and useful for you going forward so i think just as a general rule it's always good to work with vector layers rather than raster layers in clip studio paint so let's start by naming these two layers um, and we'll call this one rulers and the bottom one, I usually just call it um, OTL for outlines or line work, whatever works for you. It's always a good idea to name your layers just for kind of clarity's sake. And then you can kind of see what you're doing a little bit better. So we're going to start out by um, selecting our figure tool here. So the, it's called the figure tool. It actually kind of does rulers. There's, there's a few kind of tools in here a little bit weirdly named. And you can see on your keyboard here, just press U and you can go to it. Um, so if we click on that, it'll bring up the sub tool. And then you can see up here we've got a whole range of different tools in here. So Clip Studio Paint is primarily a manga focused drawing application. And so you've got things like a frame tool here. You've also got this um, saturated line tool, which I think is a little bit weirdly named. It's actually a focus line tool. Um, so focus lines in manga, as you know, are probably going to draw your attention on to something a little bit more clearly. Um, I've actually got a video tutorial in Clip Studio Paint on how to do those coming up on your screen right now. Um, if you haven't checked that out already, that's a whole kind of another tutorial to look at um, for doing those. So um, I'd strongly recommend checking that out if you haven't already. Um, but for today, we're not going to do any of that kind of stuff. We're just going to focus on this one. So this straight edge ruler up here, and we're going to take a look at the options that are in this panel. The main ones we're going to look at today are the special ruler tool and our figure ruler tool. So we've got a, a few different things in each one of these options. There's also a whole bunch of different kind of linear tools and curve tools. Um, you can use those if you want to. They're pretty straightforward in what they do, but in terms of actually drawing something like this, the two main ones that I end up using uh, most of the time are the figure tool, and so the figure ruler and the um, special ruler that's got a few different options in it. So let's start with a um, figure ruler here. And we're gonna look at the options down here. We got a square, we got a circle, and we got a hexagon. Um, you can actually change a bunch of different things here about this and kind of give it more sides, if you will. So if you've got this one here um, in your options, you can actually increase the number of signs, sides that you want. If you don't want a hexagon or you want a pentagon or something else, you can change all those things. We're gonna leave it at that, and we're gonna focus on the circle one here. Um, in case you didn't catch that, I just went to click down on the little spanner to bring this um, particular window up of settings. Um, but yeah, so we're going to start with that one. And how it works, basically, we're going to go make sure that we're on our ruler layer up where we created it. And then we're going to click and drag. As always, if you hold down shift, you're going to make a perfect circle. Um, but we're going to leave that like this, for instance, for instance, right now, because we're creating an ellipse. So 
as you can see I'm just kind of making sure that this is all good and then I can let go and then as I let go and my mouse without having to actually click on the screen I can actually rotate this um, as I need so let's go ahead and just do this so one of the really cool things about Clip Studio Paint if I zoom in here you can kind of see what I'm doing a bit better is where other programs will just like that's it that's your line Clip Studio Paint uses this as a, as a ruler, which is what the tool is actually called. So if I switch back to my pen here, my G pen, which is the one I use all the time, you can see that I can actually just draw anywhere on this line and it won't necessarily fill the entire line. So for instance, this is super handy if I'm just wanting, you know, an ellipse or like the ledge of a tube or something to start here and then kind of taper off because I don't want the entire thing. I can do that pretty easily and it doesn't fill up the whole thing. So obviously if I'm using a mouse here, it's going to make sure that I've got a nice kind of even thick line all the way through and then I've got this really perfect ellipse all the way through. But the really cool thing I really enjoy about this is that you can actually make this a little bit more kind of drawing like and get this idea of, you know, you actually hand drew this rather than having it be something that's going to be too restrictive as for that guide. So that's one of the really nice things about this tool that I super enjoy working in, in Clip Studio Paint with. Um, so let's undo that. Let's clear this for, for right now. Um, and we're actually gonna go and edit this. So obviously I've just kind of drawn this anywhere in my canvas, but what I want is probably for it to kind of go like right here. I wanna do, draw this one. So I'm gonna go onto here and I can edit this ellipse after I've actually done it. So up here in my tool panel, you can see I've got this guy here called operations. Um, so I'm gonna click on that and then select the objects. And then I can literally just go and click on this guy in here. So using this one, I can then move the entire object. Oops, sorry, clicked on the wrong one. Should probably lock that one. Um, I can click on this one. Nope, there we go. Um, and then transform this and drag it down into there and then holding down shift, I can move it around, I can rotate it, I can basically do what I want to it. If I don't hold down shift, obviously, it's gonna squish and distort this to where I need it to be. Um, so that's always gonna be kind of super helpful there. It's a good idea as well, because you can see that I've got it at an angle. So it's making my bounding box around this to transform it a little bit funky, um, and it's a little bit hard to control the, the kind of width of it. So I'm gonna get out of that and go back into it once it's basically kind of rotated in a vertical way. And then that's gonna give me a lot more control over that. So just a nice little kind of tip for you guys to kind of think about when you're doing this or you have to arrange this, you can do it a little bit more easily if your ellipse isn't already on an angle, it's gonna kind of translate a lot more easily than if it was. So that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that being there the way that it is. And so I'm going to zoom in on this and I'm going to draw that section of this kind of weird little machine here. So I'm just going to stick that right there. So the cool thing about this now is I can reuse this guide somewhere else. And this is why I've created these two layers. So what I'm going to do is on my ruler layer, which now you can see has the ruler and the line work, obviously. Um, I'm going to go down to my panel here in my layers and I'm going to click on this guy here which is transfer to lower layer. Right? So that's going to take the artwork on the layer, not the ruler, just the artwork and it's going to transfer it to the lower layer. So it doesn't look like it's done anything now but now if I turn off my ruler layer you can see that my ruler disappears and my outline layer is the one that actually has the line work on it. So basically you can kind of use one layer as rulers and then transfer that down to your drawing layer. So we can then reuse this guy and edit it as we're going. So we're gonna go back into this and we're gonna hit Command T and then we're gonna stretch this up to do the other one. So just readjust this as you need. And again, I might just go this vertical way here and then Command T again, and then do it this way. It might be a little bit easier. Yeah, that's much better. Rotate that, drag that one over here. 
and then we're good to go. So now we're working on like concentric ellipses, which is even kind of more of a challenging thing. And then I can switch back to my pen tool and draw the rest of this in and then go back to my transfer to lower layer. And I've got both of these guys now on this layer, which is again, gonna be super, super handy for me. So now I can just kind of continue drawing this as I need to go with different shapes. So we're gonna take a look now at drawing this kind of half sphere and seeing what we can do with this. So let's start by deleting this particular ruler here and we can just take that icon and just drag it into the bin and that's deleted. So we don't want interference in between the two rulers because they will overlap at this stage. Um, you can have multiple rulers on the same layer, that's perfectly fine, but if they start to overlap, then the program's not gonna know which one you're trying to apply it to and it might kind of do a little bit of weird stuff. So just safer in this instance to delete this. And uh, we're gonna switch back to our um, figure tool here, our ruler, and then I'm literally just gonna draw a perfect circle. So it's going from the center out, so I'm holding down shift, and then I'm just gonna roughly line that up to my to the edges of my ellipse. Um, and then click and release. And then I can start to draw this back in here. And there we go. Um, so this is again where it's handy for you guys to kind of think about because obviously I've got a different line thickness on the edge of my first ellipse here. So I can actually take that back in and kind of copy that out of my thickness and then the thickness matches up so it looks a little bit more kind of natural on something like this. So just making sure that that all kind of aligns. And there we go. So again, you know, like this depends on what you're trying to do. Make sure I transfer it back down to my original layer. Um, if you're happy for this to be a little bit more kind of hand drawn feel, then you don't really need to do all this stuff. But if you're trying to get something nice and kind of geometric and even throughout, then this is gonna be super, super handy. Um, and this is also where you'll notice, um, obviously I've kind of overlapped my line here drawing this so this is maybe going to be a bit of an issue so having my vector layer here is going to be really handy for this kind of stuff because what it means is if I switch back to my um, outline layer and I go to my eraser tool so E on the keyboard you can see that as I click on this any overlapping line will automatically get scrapped um, and so all I've done here is using my eraser tool on a vector layer, this only works on a vector layer, not on a bitmap layer. Um, I can literally just cut a line through this and it will scrap it out. Um, and so basically, you know, again, kind of a demonstration of that is if I've got one, two, and I've got these two things and I want the first one to overlap the second one, then I literally just go to my layer and literally just draw a line through those two and they get deleted at the intersection. So it's super handy and powerful tool um, for you guys to use when you're using Clip Studio Paint. Um, and that's why I highly recommend using um, vector layers and getting used to those rather than using your standard bitmap layer. Okay, so now let's take a look at doing these tubes up here. Um, and tubes are always a little bit tricky because as I said, you'll start by kind of doing one of these lines and that's totally fine. To, to kind of achieve this this result, you know, like when you're drawing the first one, who cares? It's just it just goes wherever you tell it to. But as soon as you're trying to draw the second one, that's when you get like, you know, it's a lot thicker here than it is here, and it might not be exactly the same kind of line all the way through. So that can be quite challenging when you're doing this kind of stuff. So again, there's a ruler for that as well. So where previously we deleted our ruler, we're gonna be working up here now, so I probably don't need to delete this ruler. That's all good. So I'm gonna switch back to my um, ruler tool here, and instead I'm gonna to go to my special ruler. And in the special ruler, in the options underneath, you'll see a range of different options down here. So we've got parallel line, parallel curve, multiple curve, and radial line, which is the one that we use for drawing kind of focus lines. Um, radial curve, concentric circles, um, which is a super handy one as well, um, and then just a guide. So we're gonna look at this one, parallel curve. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow us to create this parallel curve. So I'm gonna click here and drag this out, and then I'm just gonna go down to like this point. So if you're used to using kind of um, the pen tool in Illustrator, if you've ever used these kind of things called these Bezier curves, which is what the kind of cool, you'll, you'll be familiar with how this works. It takes a little bit of getting used to of like where you put your points and all that kind of stuff can be a little bit funny at times. Um, and then I'm just gonna double click 
to create that line. So again, if you've stuffed this up, if you're not happy with where it's, with how it's looking, you can always go back up to our um, object tool here, click on your guide, and you can edit this at will, which is always kind of super handy to, to do as well. So we're gonna just make sure that that's looking kind of pretty close to what I want. Um, just gonna reorganize this a little bit and make sure that that one's down here and is all lining up pretty solid. Um, yeah, that'll do for now. So now I'm gonna switch back to my pen tool and literally what this is going to do is it's going to draw these lines. But the nice thing about this one is, as you can see, if I draw on the curve on the actual kind of pink purple line here, it'll do that. But I don't necessarily need to stick to that. I can go outside and it will still follow that curve. So don't worry too much about, you know, like, oh, if this is not the right thickness of the tube or if my tube's a bit thicker than that, you can go from wherever you want. It'll always draw these lines in parallel. So. Here we go, we're gonna draw the first one right here, and then we're gonna go the second one. I'm going from the edge of the, the kind of the plug of the tube here because that's where it matters, that's where the thickness kind of matters most, and then we're good to go. So that's super easy way to draw these kind of parallel curves and make sure that they are actually parallel and they're the same exact curve all the way through. Then again, I'm gonna transfer this down to my lower layer, so the inking is now on that bottom one and I can go back to my object tool and I can either redraw a completely new guide or I can just take the one that I've already done and just edit that and move it around so that it kind of does what I need it to, right? Sometimes it's easier just to start from scratch, I find, in these situations rather than trying to get the one that you've already done to just kind of fit and it doesn't quite line up exactly how you wanted it and can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, often it, it can be the case that it's just like, you know what, just start again and it'll be a whole lot easier on your artwork. Um, so yeah, so just to show you guys that you can reuse a guide once it's done. And I'm gonna switch back again to my pen tool and this one's a little bit thinner. And again, because I'm using a vector layer, I'm not too fussed about going over the first tube because I can just use my eraser tool um, in a sec and scrap that out. So literally E on my keyboard, get rid of those two, and now my tubes are nicely aligned. There's literally no gap in between these two. It's a very clean kind of join on this, as you can see. So it really is pretty kind of flawless how you can kind of work this. So that's generally how I would end up kind of drawing my tubes. Um, and then obviously, if you want to be really kind of finicky here, you can draw another ellipse right here and, whoops, sorry, um, and you know, make sure that this one's nice and clean, but this is easy enough to kind of add in there. So just add in those little kind of joins on there and we've got our tubes nice and easy to, to work with. And now before I show you guys the final tool in the figure tool that is super handy, um, I just wanna show you guys a few more kind of basic ones like straight lines and curves that you can kind of customize for you. So go back into your um, figure tool here and we're just going to go into the um, linear ruler and there's a bunch of different options in here. So the first one is your straight edge right here and if we click and drag you'll see that we'll make a straight line um, and as with before we can kind of control the tapered thickness. The difference here in between using this um, and just your shift tool which most kind of programs and apps will actually have if you kind of draw a point and then hold down shift you can see that it does that straight line, but I'm not in control over the thickness. It's literally kind of applying it as if it was with a mouse. Um, and so that's not necessarily something that I want to do here. So the, the curve tool here or the straight line tool will allow me to do that a little bit more easily. Um, you can also do these curves if you want to as well. So again, we're going to click and drag um, and then it's going to allow us to kind of pull this curve either way. So again, it takes a little bit of getting used to doing the exact thing that you're after. Um, but once you're there, you're going to be pretty happy with what it looks like. Uh, and so again, I can just draw this curve here. So this is kind of cool for this kind of swoosh effect that you're looking at. But you'll notice as well that with most of these, as opposed to our parallel line ruler here, I can't start drawing on the side here and have it line up. It doesn't stick to the ruler. I need to actually be 
on the, the line of the ruler here for it to actually stick to it and, and magnetize to it. I can't draw on the side and have it go and match up. So if you're after this kind of like, you know, swoosh effect, then you're probably better off using the special ruler and going to parallel curve and creating something like that um, for yourself. So that's the first one that I wanted to show you guys. The next one is how to kind of create this branch down here, this straight kind of edge arm that goes into her back. And we're gonna use the, um, we're gonna go back to our special ruler and we're gonna go with parallel line instead of parallel curve. And I'm gonna click and drag again here to control the angle. All right, so I want roughly this angle and that's all good. Make sure that you guys don't just click. If you click, it's just gonna create a horizontal by default. So we want this on a bit of an angle. Um, so click and drag, and it doesn't have to be exactly in the middle because again, we can draw the lines wherever we want. Um, and then I can go into my pen tool and literally just draw this one here, this one right there, and then do the same with the top here. And there we go, we've got our kind of parallel lines right there. I'll stick this on the bottom of our layer again. All right, so there we go. Transfer down to the bottom layer and then using my eraser tool on this guy, I can get rid of the line behind it and I can start to draw in the rest as well. Again, I could use my ellipse as I've mentioned before here, but these guys are relatively easy to draw, so I wouldn't really bother too much with these ones at this stage. But those are the two kind of main things that I wanted to show you guys, really simple ruler tools that can be super handy before we move on to the final one. So the final one I wanted to show you guys is the concentric circles and ellipses tool. So this is super handy for doing um, this guy, this kind of eyeball robot thing that's watching her. We've got these concentric ellipses, concentric circles. Um, and so you could just do, you know, your circle ellipse and then fix your guide and then draw the next one down if you wanted to. But um, the concentric ellipse tool is, and circle tool is going to be a lot more handy for this kind of stuff with maybe a few caveats as well that you'll see as I start to do this. So we'll go back to our special rule tool and then go to select our concentric circles. So if I click and drag here, you'll see I'm holding down shift um, and it's making me a perfect circle and then I can let go and then click again and I've got this kind of concentric circle. It's on an angle, but it doesn't matter because it's a perfect circle. So unlike what we just saw again, because it's parallel lines, it doesn't matter where I draw, it's gonna stick to my guide. So it doesn't actually need to be on the line in order to fix onto that guide um, because we're doing parallel lines here. So again, they want you to be able to kind of draw as many concentric circles as you need for this kind of stuff. So that's gonna be super handy um, going forward. The next thing that we can kind of work with is if we obviously don't hold down shift and we're going to do this kind of lens bit here, um, we can just not hold down shift and then it will make these ellipses that we can then put on an angle. The really cool thing about this is that it's actually doing the perspective for you as well. So you can actually see that on the top and bottom of this ellipse, the gap actually gets wider than it does in the middle, right? So if I start here and go out, the gap on top here, I'll create a new layer, this guy here versus this one here is actually bigger because that's how ellipses will work if you've got this kind of rim. So it's simulating that for you, which I think is really cool. The only issue with this is unlike your other rulers, you're gonna have a hard time editing this as you go. So let's make this again. Right, so we're going to draw this ellipse here and as you can see, as I draw it, I'm only able to stretch it and squash it in a vertical or horizontal. I can't put it on an angle just yet. So it's very tricky at this stage to go like, all right, I have to kind of guess in the future how wide my ellipse is. And then when I let go of that one, I can rotate it and it's like, ah, oh, shit, it's not perfect. Um, but the problem is where normally I could go into this guy and say, you know what, I wanna edit you and squash you down. Because again, we're working with a parallel line where entire, the entire canvas is potentially gonna be used. If I press Command T here, you'll notice, whoops, I don't know what's happened here. Um, I've drawn my ellipse on the wrong layer. Somehow I've deleted my layer. That's all right, I'll just 
make a new vector layer and then drag this ruler back onto it right here. And there we go. Sorry about that. These little kind of issues can happen sometimes. Um, so yeah, so what I was saying is if I press Command T now, you'll see that it's actually selecting my entire canvas. It's put handles across the entire thing. And if I want to squash that down, you'll notice that it just kind of screws the whole thing. So this one's a little bit kind of trickier to use in that sense. So I just wanted to show you guys how to create these concentric ellipses if you um, are ever in a position to want to do that. But on something like this, on this lens here, what I would advise is that you guys do the following. So we're going to go back into our um, special ruler concentric ellipse. And then we're not going to worry too much about getting it right. We're just going to make a random ellipse. Um, and then again, same thing with the angle. Let's keep this kind of vertical, as much vertical as we possibly can. And then we're going to draw in one and two. And then I'm going to make another vector layer, smash that underneath it, put my artwork on that one, and then Command T on that and fix that as I need to here. So it's a bit of a roundabout way um, to do it. And again, you know, that particular ruler can be super handy in some scenarios, but in other times it can be a little bit tricky, um, as you guys just saw with this. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, you're going to have a much easier time working with these kind of rulers and guides, creating artwork like this as long as you're on a vector layer that you can kind of start to erase different things um, and have a look at all kind of how that works. So that's basically it for um, the rulers that I would use. As you guys can see, there's a whole bunch of other ones in here, so you can have a play around with them, but some of them are more useful than others. Um, the ones that I just showed you are the ones that I tend to use um, most of the time. So you guys can see in here, I've got some perfect circles, I've got some tubes, I've got some ellipses, um, I've got these straight lines that go into circles and all this kind of stuff. So that's what I would use um, to create an artwork like this um, going forward. So yeah, again, um, feel free to experiment with all of this kind of stuff uh, and see where it lands you. Um, but yeah, again, it's a tool that I use all the time. And that about wraps up our video for today, guys. So as always, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new out of this. If you did, a like and a subscribe would be super appreciated as always. Um, I've recently hit a thousand subscribers. So thanks to everybody for the love and support that you're showing me. Really enjoying doing these videos. Um, and until the next episode, take care and we'll see you around.